8. I'm probably going to take two weeks to get through this outline. There's a number of things here. I have found in recent days how valuable wisdom is. And uh, I feel like I need wisdom every day. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we need in this life. You know, there's a number of things mentioned tonight. We need resources, finances. We need um, God's intervention. Uh, you know, just you name it. There, there's so many needs represented in a church on a Wednesday night. And that's always going to be the case. We're always going to have a number of needs that we have. But uh, one of the things that I think we always need and we must always ask for and be seeking after fervently is the wisdom from on high, God's wisdom. I'm not talking about man's wisdom, but God's wisdom, which is far different. And as a matter of fact, uh, man's wisdom is foolishness with God. If you look at what's happening in our world today, it is just, it's foolishness. It really is. And uh, what's going on on college campuses, what's happening across the country at commencements and commencement addresses and you know, there's a need for personnel to be uh, ready to act at a moment's notice because something could happen. This is foolishness. And uh, to a certain degree, some, uh, or if not all, in that, on that side of things would say, no, we're doing exactly what we should be doing, you know? But the wisdom of man is foolishness with God. What we need is God's wisdom, and we need to see the benefits of that. So in Proverbs chapter 8, I'm going to start just by reading the first 11 verses, and I want to kind of explore the great benefits of God's wisdom as we see it in God's word. Proverbs 8, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way and the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, there is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. So let's think about the great benefits of wisdom. Let's pray. Father, we need your help in these few minutes that we have. Speak to our hearts. Help us to see the importance of your wisdom and how we can achieve it and receive it. Uh, I pray that you would uh, show us what we need to know and hear and understand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, we are constantly inundated with the wisdom of this world. But it is the wisdom of God that's essential to a life that pleases him and that his wisdom always defeats the wisdom of this world. Much of Proverbs is a comparison and contrast between the superiority of God's wisdom and the error of man's wisdom. And it, it's a sharp contrast. As you read the book of Proverbs, you see that comparison and contrast so vividly. Uh, this is God's way. This is man's way. As a matter of fact, it's the eighth day of the month, and we're in the eighth chapter of Proverbs. And it's a, a good practice, perhaps, to read a proverb a day, if you're able to. And uh, this is very fitting for us now, because there is a contrast between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of man. And we need to know what God's instructing us about his wisdom so that we can receive it properly. Uh, notice number one. Wisdom is calling out and desiring to be received. We see a personification of wisdom in the image of a woman that is crying at the gates, standing at the top of the high places, calling and saying, uh, here I am, please, you need what I have, you need what only I can provide. And... Uh, 
we need to understand that wisdom's available and the wisdom of God, it, it, it's honestly there if we'll go to God's word and find it. Now, we have, to, we have to go to God's word, we have to mine it, we have to get it, but it's not all that difficult to just open God's word and, and get the wisdom that's there. Uh, one of the things we should do is go to God's word daily, but also ask the Lord daily for his wisdom. One of our daily prayers should be, Lord, please give me your wisdom today. Some of you are in the midst of, you're in the midst of some hard decisions at work. You're in the midst of some difficult decisions within your home in raising your kids together. Uh, some of you have to make decisions that could have a great deal of finances on the line. And again, this could be in your workplace, between the walls of your home. You have to make decisions that could affect relationships, could affect employment, could affect, affect others, and, re, and, and how interaction's gonna take place with others, and there's big decisions to be made. And I will say, don't go into those decisions and making them without the wisdom of God. Every day, say, Lord, I need your wisdom. I can't proceed without you showing me what I need to know. Uh, more than a few times, I have been in a place where I just don't know what to do. And you would think, you know, I, I used to think, man, if by the time I'm a, you know, somewhat of a middle-aged guy in my 40s, and, you know, I'll, I'll know everything I need to do. Well, I actually probably know less than I thought I knew earlier. And, uh, and the only thing I know that I need is I need God's wisdom. Amen. Because there's plenty of times where I'm just at a loss for an answer. And, man, life gets complicated, and life gets intricate and nuanced, and there's all these little situations, <laughs> and there's the creases of life that you find yourself in, and you realize there's a lot of weight above me, and there's a lot of, uh, there, there's a lot of lives underneath me that are affected, and I must make the right choice here. Otherwise, much could come crashing down. But understand, A, the wisdom of God is readily available to us. It contains, letter B, more value than the most precious stones. I love that it says that to us. For verse 11, wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. It's far more valuable than the most precious stones that you can find in the earth. Uh, as I understand it, a pure ruby, a, a red ruby, is one of the most valuable stones you can find. And yet, it doesn't even come close. It pales in comparison to the great wisdom of God. So, if, if that's the case, don't you think we should be going to the Lord daily and saying, God, I need your wisdom from above and from on high? Number two, I've written this, prudence and witty inventions are specific to godly wisdom. Let's look at verse 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. And so I know there's, there's, there's really kind of a, a compound word there, but it's prudence and witty inventions. Those things are specific to godly wisdom. Prudence here means discretion. Discretion. That means having an understanding and a knowledge of what to say and when to say it and how to act in certain places, how to be discreet. I, I'm always very thankful for discreet people and people who know, you know, how, how to talk in certain ways and not to not to throw people under the bus or to stab people in the back, but who can just go about ways of uh, describing things and situations in a discreet way. And uh, who are sensitive to people and situations, but at the same time know how to communicate in a way that we're trying to make progress and we're trying to help someone or something or a situation. Discretion. Discretion doesn't always come naturally. But God can give that to us, and we need that discretion, and we need to know how to talk to people. We need to know how to help certain people in a way that is not demonstrative, or that, or that is not uh, trying to garner attention for us, or look at me. There's so much of that today. God's people need the prudence uh, that he provides. 
And, and then notice this. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, witty inventions here, letter B, refers to uh, suge suge uh, suge sagacity. I think that's how you say it. S-A-G-A-C-I-T-Y. Sagacity or special knowledge. And so there's special knowledge or understanding. I'm not talking about some kind of extra revelation apart from God's word. But there are people who have special insight. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just there is something there. There's a certain spark. There is just a, you know, sagacity. We, we get that word from, like, we think of a sage. And they, we might say that person has sage advice. Uh, they have that kind of, uh, that, that extra uh, thing to offer, that wisdom that maybe others don't have. And then we see that there is access to exclusive understanding through it. So through the word of God, uh, we can have that special insight and that special understanding that others might not have. God wants you to have that. God wants to provide you with that. I appreciate it when people have depth of understanding on things and they can provide that. And it seems as though when you're listening to them, there's liquid gold being poured into your ears and you just think, wow, this is deep and this is uh, so incredibly profound and it's helping me in great ways. Uh, I, I appreciate people like that. And God can make you a person like that. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to score a perfect SAT. You just have to walk with God. Amen. You just have to have the wisdom that's from on high. And the Lord wants to provide that to you. We see number three, counsel and strength are also beneficial aspects of wisdom. Look at verse 14, and I'll read through verse 16. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. So counsel and strength are also beneficial aspects of wisdom. Godly wisdom is necessary for rule and authority. Pray for all those who are in authority. We are commanded that in scripture, to pray for kings and for those who are in authority. I hope we're praying for our elected leaders. We must be doing so whether you agree with them or not. There, there's great decisions that they make, decisions that work their way down to affect all kinds of people. And for example, me just receiving the news that my son might be deployed off to the Middle East, that, that's affected by those in higher positions of authority making those decisions and passing those decisions down. We need to be praying for those who are in those positions. And yeah, I understand if we don't, like those who are in authority, vote in someone that you do like. Vote in someone that you do agree with. I'm all for that. I, <laughs> I vote for everything. Dog catcher, grass picker, I don't know what there is that's left anymore, but I, if there is an election to be had for it, I will vote for it. I'll find a way to vote. We need to get to the polls and do that, but more importantly, we also need to be praying for wisdom for those who are in authority. Godly wisdom is necessary for rule. We also see this, letter A, counsel literally means advice. Counsel is mind and sound wisdom. Seek out people who have sound wisdom. Get advice from people who are walking with the Lord, who are active in church, who walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And then watch their life and observe them and and find counsel from them, and find counsel from the Word of God. It means advice. We need advice sometimes. Sometimes we just need to go to somebody and say, I need your, I need your advice on something. I, I really need you to help me to understand something here. Tell me what your approach to this will be. And I can remember there was a lot of moments like that during the pandemic and COVID and, you know, um, I think we see with 2020 vision looking back, but in the midst of that, there's some hard decisions to be made. And I can remember <clears throat> just several occasions, I didn't know what to do. And I 
I asked the Lord for help and for wisdom, but I also went to some godly counsel, and I went to some men who I respected. And I said, what are you going to do here? What's your approach going to be? Help me to understand what would be the wise way. And you know what? I think we are all trying to ask each other what we were doing, because as many calls as I made, I had people calling me asking me what I'm going to do. And a couple of guys that called me and asked me what I was doing, I said, you should not be calling me, I should be calling you. And I did. We were all just trying to seek one another's help and counsel and advice. There's no better counsel, though, than that which is from God. God can give us the clearest, best advice to be found. And where there is godly wisdom, there is great power. Oh, we need the power of God in these days. He says, I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles and even all the judges of the earth. God's in control of this. The strength that comes from those who are in positions of authority is ultimately strength that God allows and that God gives or God takes away. And we need to understand that tonight. I'm going to stop there because our time is short. Let's take about five to ten minutes. Let's find someone to pray with and then we'll close.